What's up, FishTube, and welcome back. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to this video, and you'll get more content in your feed. So today I wanted to give a quick update about the Kalkwasa that I started using. I can't remember if I mentioned it in a previous video, but I decided after seeing Mark Levinson's video with uh, Chris from ACI Corals, or ACI Aquaculture, sorry, that I would go all out with the Kalkwasa. So for those of you who don't know what Kalkwasser is, it is calcium hydroxide, which when in solution and dosed into your aquarium, splits up into the calcium ion and the hydroxide ion, and the hydroxide bonds with carbon dioxide to form bicarbonate, and that will raise your alkalinity and your pH while also removing some of the carbon dioxide, which also suppresses your pH. I am not a chemist, so that's just my rough scientific understanding of how it works. I read something interesting the other day that supposedly the calcium ions can then bond to phosphate to form calcium phosphate and remove that like a flocculent would. Um, I'll have to dig deeper into that, so don't quote me on that one yet. But so we'll get into what I did. I have the Calcstir running not 24-7 anymore, but now based on pH dosing. So the apex will shut off the feed pump, which right now is a Ecotech Versa, uh, whenever the pH is above 8.3. So it can hit 8.3, and as soon as it hits 8.35, it shuts right off because that rounds up to 8.31. No, sorry, not 8.35, 8.305. Whenever it rounds up, it doesn't give you that extra decimal point. So it's been going at a higher rate, so I doubled the dose rate. So it should only be on about half the time. And so far it's working great. I'll throw some pH graphs up on the screen momentarily, but let me show you what's uh, getting it all done. So as you guys can see, the stand is a little less cluttered now, although I haven't quite gotten these hoses arranged into a uh, better form. Here is the Avast Marine Stir which is being fed by this Ecotech Versa. Let me see if I can get the camera in there. Right up there. And that is pulling, a little close to the microphone, it's suction through that white hose right here. I managed to snake that into the basement, which I'll show you guys sh shortly. And so it's got, I don't want to call it an infinite supply, but it's got a much longer lasting supply of uh, RODI water. And the same thing with my ATO. I used a 3 8 tubing in order to reduce the head loss on the PMUP and then check valve so it doesn't flow back so that the pump doesn't have to send it all the way up here every time and into the uh, quarter inch tubing as expected and into the ATK setup. So let's go downstairs and see how that's operating but also if you'll notice no bubbles. The uh, calcium reactor is currently off I didn't need it. The uh, alkalinity got up to 11 with this method, so we're uh, experimenting a little bit here. All right, welcome back down to the fish dungeon, as uh, some of you have been here before. Feeding everything is now these two lines that I secured up in the ceiling that are going down to, there we have a peam up into a 3 8 line and the quarter inch line is for the Versa for the Calcster. I added in Neptune's new magnetic optical sensor. As a part of the Neptune Systems Insider program, I've been beta testing it, and I'm now allowed to tell you about it. So it is a magnetic optical sensor. A little new form factor, still works the same, but instead of you can, you might be able to see at the bottom on the peam up is an optical sensor, the standard thread on one. And in this application, I couldn't get the pump to sit flat with the tubing. And I don't want the level to even get that low anyway. So I used this magnetic sensor on the side of the drum in order to turn the RODI on if the level ever gets too low. So you'll see that is mounted right there. It's got a nice neat orange magnet. That'll kick my RODI system back on. I've talked to you guys about that before. Kick that on, tops this back up. It is set to run for four hours, which fills the drum about halfway. 
If it reaches the other sensor, it will send me an alert. And I also have the logging turned on. So for those of you who don't know, the logging feature in the Apex allows you to track what an outlet does. So I have the log turned on for the ATK as well as the RODI outlets. So this way I can look at a graph and pull up how many times in a given period, I think it's up to seven days, that that thing has run. So if I'm worried about, you know, maybe this is acting funky because now I'm not carrying buckets up the stairs, I don't really have a good feel for the evaporation rate, I can check and see how many times did the pump actually run and how many times has it refilled my storage bin because as you can see my storage bin over here it can hold 50 gallons I rarely fill it up all the way except for when I'm making salt water and transferring it over anyway so this way I can still keep tabs on how much water I'm consuming especially with the calc stir you know you don't want to let that get away from you but with the trident checking every three hours for my alkalinity I think I've got a lot of automation but I'm also really on top of it all right, we're back at the tank, and uh, we'll look at the results of this test. Everything is looking amazing. I mean, even this clam. This is my second clam ever. The last one didn't live very long. Um, it's thriving in this high pH environment. This thing is, uh, as the saying goes, happy as a clam, except for my conversation with Joe Yaiulo at uh, the Long Island Aquarium. Clams are not very happy, and they're a pain. So whoever made up that saying was a liar. But everything's looking great. My LPS, my SPS, and then let's look at this giant. The uh, purple stylophora is looking great. Uh, this guy, I don't even know what it's called. You picked that up at um, Reefapalooza. I got this Ghani right here. If it'll focus, there we go. That little guy's starting to encrust. Look at the polyps. Yeah, this thing won't zoom that close, but you get the picture. Everything's thriving. I mean, it hasn't gotten, I don't think it's had any impact on my algae problem, but I'm hoping as the, what we call it, the coralline algae takes over a little better, it'll help limit the growth of the hair algae. But we'll get on top of that. Thanks for watching my update on the calc wasser. Hopefully I'll have some good results to share with you guys soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos every time I remember to do one. I'm trying to get better at it, but uh, hopefully we'll have some better stuff for you guys real soon. Thanks for watching.